Warning. The Dragon Between podcast may contain language and adult humor that is unsuitable for those 13 years and younger. Viewer discretion is advised. You are listening to the Dragon Between podcast, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign that takes place in the Eberron pulp fantasy setting created by Keith Baker. New episodes are recorded every Sunday and are released on the following week. You can find the video version on the YouTube channel. And if you like what you see and hear, feel free to drop us a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter for updates and news on the podcast. Thank you for listening, and now on with the show. The battle with the aberrant creatures raged on as music fled and ran directly into some clan Asha Samurai. Gorat and Igor uh, followed... Uh, the charmed were forged as he gathered his thoughts and returned to the fray. Meanwhile, in the plain of Donvi, the wizard Eli collected himself and realized he was alone in the workshop. Sifting through mudded haze and recent memories, Eli recalled that his friends left for Hartham to help Ender. The wizard then made haste to the prime gate and found himself standing in the middle of the street near Gutter Guts. As Lathana tended to an unconscious Zito, the source of his inju- injuries burst up from below the ground and began assaulting Red with its blade-like appendages. The enraged barbarian hacked and slashed at her attacker, but was ultimately laid low by the huge insect. The group's artificer and barbarian ultimately succumbed to their injuries. Eli arrived on the field of battle and utilized a wall of force to protect his allies from the terrifying subterranean aberrant creature. After wailing on the invisible barrier, the huge insect burrowed into the ground and was gone. Protected within Eli's magical barrier, the characters had a few minutes to gather their thoughts and decide on how to help their deceased companions. The samurai impressed upon the group a sense of urgency, detailing the invading shogunate samurai converging on the mayor's house and the glowing barrier engulfing the apex of Titan's Reach. The party then decided to return to uh, Donvi and seek a resurrection for Red and Zeta. As the wall of force ended and Eli cast teleportation, the group's ranger began to receive messages from a familiar source. The characters arrived in the Hall of Justice and brought the bodies of their friends to a room of healing. After the party committed a great deal of coin to the rituals, Red and Zito were returned to life, their bodies completely restored. The group then returned to Hartham and ducked inside a trashed gutter guts, coming face to face with a quite distraught kobold. Billy described the turn of events that had led to the tavern's current state. The diminutive kobold detailed a quite distraught Auri fleeing gutter guts in the early hours of the morning. She then explained to the party that soldiers had barged into the establishment and had arrested Ender, slaying Mokinok in the process. The group deliberated on their next action, deciding to head over towards Mayor Ostern's home. Before exiting the tavern, the party observed an elegantly dressed man walking alone in the middle of the road. Heading off to the north, the characters then began to creep along the edge of the main road. Suddenly, arrows began peppering the group from unseen attackers. As the party sought the source of these arrows, the mysterious man was observed standing in the crossroads. The characters sprang into action, rushing the interloper. One by one, dark-clothed archers in elevated positions began to rain more arrows upon the group. The elegantly dressed man was revealed to be Castor, Lathana's estranged cousin. As the group battled the dark warriors, Castor manifested a dome of ice to protect himself, tearing the attacking samurai Iker in half. Music then dominated the mind of one of the archers, and the individual pulled back their hood, revealing a con- construct resembling Lathana Asia. The group then heard their companions' familiar laughter all around them, a disturbing cacophony em- emanating from the dark leather-clad warriors. And I will progress to round three. We had just completed round two. I'll go ahead and share a map with you guys once again. And by the way, Jeremy, did you see my message? I saw a message. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Give me one second. 
Let's take a look. Bum, bum. Yeah, that sounds pretty funny. <laughs> All right, we'll plan it out one week. Yeah. All right, let's see who goes next. It's Sabrina, Lathana Aisha's turn. All right. What does Lathana see before her at the moment? Uh, well, let's see. Um, straight, not too far away from her, a couple, you know, about 10 feet, she sees music. And he's look, glancing around. Uh, she sees the samurai Gort a few feet away from him. Uh, you can see perched up on the roof, uh, you see a nearly perfect copy of yourself in metal. But instead of raven hair, uh, it has silvery Brillo pad like hair that is spilling out from beneath its hood that is just pulled back. Uh, it's not a aiming its uh, bow at, at any of you, though. It seems to be turning around and regarding uh, someone behind them. Can't quite see that person, though. You can see a large dome of ice in the middle of the little crossroads there. Uh, the individuals inside obscured from view. Uh, and looking over to the west along the edge of the building, you can see uh, Zito, who is down below on the ground by himself. And you can see on the very edge of the building, you can see two dark leather clad individuals who are um, right behind and in front of Red. And beyond that, you can just make out a couple of individuals who are perched up on the roof of another building in the upper um, northwestern section of the map. All right. So Lefana will see the the two uh, <laughs> twin constructs um, engaging with the red. Yeah, they haven't revealed themselves, but you can assume. Oh, okay. You can assume uh, if one of them looks like you, eh, they might all look like you. Sure. Well, they're fighting with my friends, so I want them out of here. Um, I don't remember whether I had Hunter's Mark already cast or not. I can do it again if you want. Uh, well, you can look at your companions in the combat tracker. I believe it it would show up if if it was. Uh, looking around, just a cursory glance, I do not see anyone with Hunter's Mark on them. I don't think they had revealed themselves until after your last turn. Okay, cool. All right, um, she will cast Hunter's Mark on the one night right next to Red. Okay. And she will... Is this... This is round three, right? Correct. All right, she'll just... Um, she would sharpshoot it with her uh, repeating magical bow. Okay. Oh, look that at is that. a critical hit. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a plus ten damage plus critical hit. So. All right. Plus hunter's mark. That's uh. Uh, 23 damage that seems to be partially resistant to your attack. So, but it's only uh, 23 down from 26. So the arrow like sinks into the side of their body and you hear an audible thunking noise that sounded like, less like a, a, an arrow entering a body, like a fleshy body, and more like an arrow thunking a target, like a, like a, like a, a metal, object muffled in cloth all right uh, she will kind of squint and uh, try to hit it right in the neck she will sharp shoot it once more okay now, unfortunately that is a miss and 11 does not hit all right end up my turn Okay. Uh, the Lithana clone, if you will, um, took that uh, arrow, teared a piece of its armor red. You see now 
um, its construct body is gleaming uh, metal. It almost looks oily or like there's a patina to it, like it's been heat treated. Uh, and it now is has uh, cast aside its bow and it's going to try to lay into you with its uh, short sword. And 21 hits, you take uh, five magical piercing damage reduced down from 11, and then attempts to stab you in your clavicle area. Hitting again on a 25. And this time only doing three magical piercing damage reduced down from seven. Music, you're up on deck. Uh, the Lothana clone across the way is has knocked an arrow. Shutter steps over a bit. And will attempt to fire at you, Zito. I believe you had shield on. I don't I believe it may have uh faded on this new round. But it looks like it's still on you. It's last until the end of my next turn. Last until your the end of your next turn. Okay. Okay. All right. Its first attack misses, and then in quick succession, two more times attempts to fire two more arrows at you. Uh, the first one, the second one missing as well, and the third one missing. They're not having as good as luck as they did before when they were peppering you and your friends. And she is going to now drop down. Ah, you know what? She'll stay right where she is. And music, it is your turn. You said these things are made of metal? Um, The one that just pulled its hood back looked like it was uh, glinting metal from the morning sun. And the one, the one I... that you were looking at. Now, that that's not to say that you would necessarily know, necessarily know that they're all clones of Lathana and all made of metal. But one of them looks like they're made of metal, so you could assume such as such. I'm, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take that bet. And Lathana Six is the one I took control of, correct? Yes. Well, sounds like my ally needs a hand. Let's take care of Lathana Five. Okay. I'm gonna cast Heat Metal on Lathana Five. Okay. And that's basically just straight up. What? No, it's a save. Let me cast it. It fails. Does it take damage? Because I don't know for certain it's made of metal. Uh, you don't know for sure that it's made of metal, which is, uh, it again, you're assuming so as such because of the first one that you, you saw remove its, its hood. Uh, how does that spell work, heat metal, against something made of metal? Uh, if it's made of metal, white, it still white does hot, it. Correct? So it should still yeah. do damage. Yeah, it would hurt me. Yeah. So the Lathana clone begins to... Or <laughs> the leather clothing that it's wearing just starts to... Uh, there's a smell suddenly. It smells sort of like uh, hide, like animal hide burning up on the roof. And it has to repeat that save on it, uh, correct? Or does that? Do you just have to keep uh, casting that to cause damage? Actually, I can hold concentration on it. Yeah, the save is just to drop an item that is so, affecting the heat metal. So you're dropping the concentration on Lufana Six, correct? Ah, you're right. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll just do the damage one time and stop. Okay. I'll keep Lufana Six with me. Okay, so you can you can cast heat metal not as a concentration. I should be able to. What does it say in the spell description? Duration is concentration up to one minute. Okay. So yeah, I would say that if you cast that on the person behind her, and it says just says straight concentration on the spell up to one minute, then you would have to drop your um, your domination on the other one. I'm assuming music would know that, right? I would assume as such. 
Because music well, music is is well, <laughs> he's smart enough to know his own spells. Okay, well, unfortunately, Kevin is not. Um, is it possible to just retroactively heal that character back up and just let me cast Eldritch Blast instead? Uh, yeah, I will take that off. I took the damage off, so you you are welcome to uh, peg whoever whomever you like and whomever you can see. I should say. I would say though, if you're trying to fire. Eldritch Blast on Lathana 5 from that position, you can't really see her all that well, so she has um, partial cover. Unfortunately, okay, your, okay, your okay. Attack, your first attack missed anyway. <laughs> well, if she has partial cover, can I just can I just use Dissonant Whispers? Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Retcon! Retcon's everywhere. That's a natural one for Dissonant Whispers on the uh, part of the Lathana bot. Uh, that was uh, zero damage, as apparently this individual is completely resistant to your your attack. Ah, it's incredibly stupid. All right, never mind then. Okay, that was your action. Man, Kevin, music hey, gives up. It's been a couple. Music. Of, give him, cut him some slack. It's been a couple of weeks. I, all you guys, it's been a while since we played, so don't don't be too harsh on him. Mr. Music Invis is committing ritual suicide on his free action. Aw. Mr. Invisible Wizard, who's hiding underneath the... next to the building. Oh, I forgot to make you invisible. Yeah, You're next turn, I'm just gonna cast Greater Invisibility and take a nap. <laughs> Alright. Is that the end of your turn? Unfortunately, uh, yes. You, uh, you have movement, so you can move around if you like. Oh, yeah. All right, so you're rushing back over there? Yep. All right, music takes a, a not quite retreat, but a, a tactical retreat from the battlefield. Uh, Eli, you will be up here in a moment after the next Lathana clone goes. Uh, this one is going to step forward and bolstering its companion will uh, attempt to pepper Zito with arrows. The first attack. What is it with all these eights? That is the fourth eight that I've rolled. Uh, you can keep going with that, Jeremy. I'm fine right. with it. Okay. He rolls a critical hit. Uh, 27 hits, correct? Yeah, I can't do anything to stop it. So yeah, it hits. Okay. So that's going to be... Uh, 10... Nope. Actually, it's 10 plus a d10, so that's 10. Uh, 16 magical piercing damage. I will have to manually add another 6 to you. There we go. As you get uh, pelted with these magical arrows, and then on its third attack, it rolled another 8. Why couldn't it have been an eight on that last attack, right? That concludes its turn, and Eli, Invisible Eli, it is your turn. Eli will look up at the house that he has already drawn and fireball. Okay. You're going to uh, fireball the house? Yes. Okay, go for it. The roof. You're going to set somebody's house on fire. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Red's going to love that. Oh, man. All right. So I will uh, take your. I can't. Tar I'll take yeah, your I can't target nobody. You can't target nobody? Why not? I'm trying to target Lathana 4 and Lathana 2, but I can't, it won't let me target them. It says that they're targeted. No, oh, it shows okay. me you're targeting him as well. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, whoops, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let me you, get, you gotta actually roll the saves first, sir. So Okay, one, one takes that. How, how, about, how about we all take a mulligan and breathe? Just take a moment, Derek, and just breathe. I know it's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> And oh my god, it's Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Woo! It's been Dungeons and Dragons. Oh no. Okay, so let's see. Uh, 36, I'll do half damage for 
number two. So let me find number two and I'll subtract, reduce that down. We'll say that's uh, do 17 less damage. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> damage, okay. damage. That's perfectly okay. Like I said, it's the first round of combat for a game that we've had in weeks. So you gotta, you gotta get all the kinks out. You gotta iron them all, all the kinks out. Uh, in the meantime, uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to do? Well, Eli is very visible now. You are very visible, correct. Is that the end of your turn? I'm gonna remove the visible ability off or uh, condition off yeah. of you. Was there anyone else on that roof? Uh, you just saw two individuals, and you can you saw the 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 fireball uh, as it exploded. I'll play a little sound effect for you. If there is anybody else, they ain't happy. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> Thank you for that major pain uh, throwback there, Kevin. That reference is awesome. <laughs> no problem. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Well, there goes that house. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. As okay. long as Red didn't see it, I'll end my turn mm. there. Okay. On Caster's turn, uh, the um, the dome of ice which emerged and and split Icker in half. Uh, you can see a blood stain splatter up against it. It suddenly begins to melt rapidly and completely um, disappears from view. And you can see the elegantly dressed individual standing in, standing from within the, the, the circle of where the dome used to be. And there's a bit of a haze of ice crystals in the air just around him. And all of a sudden, you watch him as he creates a sigil in his hand and his form begins to shimmer. And more of him begin appearing. Yeah, I'll counterspell that. You're gonna counterspell it? Yeah, hold on, let me see. What's my, what is it range here? Oh, look, 30 feet. Counterspell at level four. At level four, okay, he has to roll, correct? Unless it's- No, uh, is, is, it, is it a level four spell or lower? It's actually a lower, so it should just go off, right? Uh, no, yeah, so counterspell, so it does not go off. Oh. So counterspell just <laughs> shuts him down. He's like, what a jerk. Oh. And he sees, he, <laughs> he, he, he looks at you, Eli, and he just sort of raises a finger up at, as, as you, you, the images begin to appear, like panes of glass begin cracking as they appear around him and just turning into um, motes of sand scattering in the wind. And he just looks at you and just smiles and shakes a finger in your direction. Like, shame, shame, would, shame. Would he have known that Eli was the one who counterspelled? Or would he had to... I mean, you know, he definitely heard the ritual. <laughs> he's 30 feet away oh, from him. Okay. He's, he's, he sees him creeping around the edge of the house. He's like, mm, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Eli not. slinks around the corner, back around the corner, you know, out of eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Gort's going to be up here in a moment. Icker is very dead. Uh, from behind you, Red, the, uh, uh, the other uh, archer now is continuing to attempt to stab you with its short sword uh critically hitting you and whoops that's not what i wanted let's see so that's going to be Uh, six. Do reduce down from thirteen plus another five for its bonus action. I'll go ahead and manually throw that on you, and it will once again attempt to stab at thee with its short sword two more times. 
Uh, missing with the second attack. And missing with the third attack. It rolled a three twice. On Gord's turn, Gord is very angry. Uh, he, a primal rage, screams and begins running forth to meet Caster. His samurai sword out, he rushes forth. And he's going to attack him on his next turn. Because he used more than more than 30 movement to get to him. And uh, this woman is no longer, this metal woman is no longer under your your control, correct? Number six, music? Yeah, she is. Oh, she is? Yeah, I didn't cast a concentration spell. I cast one that was ineffective. Very well. You may take your attack against uh, whomever. It's currently uh, armed with a bow. What do you want me to do? Just roll a d20? That's up to you. It's got. There's someone directly next to them that smells of burnt cowhide. Oh yeah. Well, no, they don't because we didn't use the heat metal. They're they're perfectly they're in perfectly good shape. Okay. Well, they're they're standing directly next to their companion at the moment with a bow in hand. It's also armed with a short sword. Well, she's going to turn and shoot him in the face. Okay. Um, so you want her to fire? You want her to move away and fire? That way she doesn't get disadvantage on her attacks. Uh, music doesn't really understand how buzz and arrows work. He just wants her to attack her. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the Colathana clone uh, at point blank range begins firing arrows at disadvantage at its uh, companion. The other one looks very confused as it is being suddenly blasted in the face with arrows. Uh, second one missing, and then the third one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. When you uh, they use their crown, crown of madness to have them attack, do they get more than one attack base, or is it just one attack? I think it's just one attack. They're required to attack one person per turn. Okay. Well, then that's the end of its turn, unless you want it to move. No, because I don't think I actually have that much control over it. I think it's just required to attack its allies. Let me read it real quick. Okay. We'll revisit it. The second one missed anyway, so we'll revisit it uh, again after uh, five uh, looks at this one and is like, what the what the flying F? <laughs> okay, all I could do is tell her to attack uh, any one person, which I'm telling her to attack that one there, and she's required to make one attack against it per turn. That's it. Okay, all right. Uh, so this one is going to... Now, it gets a save, correct? I don't think so. I know it got the original save and failed. Yeah, I think it gets a save, but I could be wrong. Magic is funny, guys. Can make at a wisdom saving so at the end of turn. Yep. Yeah, at the end of each, uh, each of right. its turn. So six will make a wisdom save to see if it can get out of this. With disadvantage because I hexed it. Okay. Uh, it rolled a two plus one failing. It is still under your control. All right. And uh, in response to it being suddenly shot in the face point blank range by number six, uh, it is going to uh, grab number six by the arm and use the shove action to try and knock it down. Well, I believe that is a contested strength versus strength, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct me, if, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds good to me. You're the dungeon master. Well, if I'm wrong, that's a natural one. Uh, so it pushes Luthana 6 off the roof. And uh, it nearly lands on your head, Eli. Falling prone. Taking uh, 7 bludgeoning damage as it does. Reduced down because it's resistant. So we'll just go ahead and say that's 6 damage. Well, she did more damage in her trade-off against the number five. Uh, and then this one is now going to 
um, run up a bit away. And it looks like it's getting ready to draw down on Gort on its next turn. And Red, your turn. It is your turn. These things have been stabbing you repeatedly over and over again. I believe you raged during the end of our last session, correct? I didn't just yeah. leave your rage on, I think. Yeah. So it, it, your rage is active. You're pissed. You're very nettled. Nettled. All right. I'm going to swing first at Lithana 3. Okay. Reckless, recklessly. Reckless. That's a hit. A 22 definitely hits. As you deal 18 slashing magical damage with your first hit. And then I'm going to do that again. Okay. Recklessly. That's a critical oh. hit. Oh. Eh. Do I want to? Hold on. Let me look and see my sword. Um... Two charges left. You know what? I'll try it. Why not? Um, okay. I'll have her. Does she have under a hundred? I'm assuming. Uh, she does. Um, so she'll make a Constitution saving throw. Funny you should ask. Um, when your sword normally you see that that eye be that that orb begin to glow in the mouth. When you struck at it, it didn't start glowing. And there was a, re it seemed like there was a rebuff. It's almost as if whatever this thing is compo composed of is creating an immunity to a critical hit. Oh. Like, All right, so it might be out made out of some alloy that prevents critical hits from going through or makes them immune to it. What a punk. All right, so then. No. Oh. Partially resisted. Would have been 23, took 18 more damage. So it did not instantly die, unfortunately. That's all right. But you learn something very interesting about them. It's, like, it's almost like this white, blinding flash of light when you struck them. Like, completely different from what you're used to whenever you have used it. I will say that for the purposes of a critical hit, you will not lose that. You're not down to one. You still have two. You have to successfully critically hit something. Okay. So I'm not going to absorb your your usage of a critical hit. Okay, cool. Um, and then we... I think Ryan sh used my shifting feature on one of the sessions I wasn't here before I died, so I don't think I have it, so that'll be the end of my turn. How does that work? Is it once per day? Uh, once per short rest. You guys did take a short rest, so you still have it. Oh, okay. So yeah, I will shift them. Okay, go ahead and give those, uh, roll that beautiful bean footage as Red suddenly begins to look like an 80s, uh, uh, hair goddess, and her canines begin to elongate, her nails are growing longer. Temporary hit points, and then that is it for me. And Derek is, is whispering in the chat again that, uh, apparently that true resurrection took eight hours to perform. No, it's not. It's an instantaneous. Oh, never mind. No, it's an hour. Okay. Well, never mind. No, yeah, it's cast, an casting hour. time is an is an hour or an instantaneous. It takes an hour. Oh, uh, oh. Did yeah. we take a short rest then? I would say you guys would have taken a short rest, but okay. Not. Oh, true. We did do hit points. We did. Yeah, you get you did do hit points, so you okay. you're, you're right, good cool. on that. All right, and then that's it for red for this oh. turn. Okay then, uh, Zito. After being peppered with arrows uh, multiple times, it is your turn. All right, the Zio is going to cast aid on himself. Okay. Red and is it Gort. Okay. And Lathana four. Uh, no, I had Lathana four targeted for him, something else, but I'm gonna untarget her. Okay. I'm going to cast at level 5 so everyone gets 20 hit points. 
Okay. I mean, you can give Lathana for uh, 20 hit points if you want. Uh, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything else that you Hang wanted on. to do? Um, yeah, after that, Zito's going to take cover behind this building that he's hiding behind. Are you going... Uh, will you... Uh, that requires an action to, to take the hide action. Oh, well, I just mean, like, he's going to hide from the archers by going behind the building. Because oh, I'm okay. actually hiding. All right, well, I'm just going to say you ran behind the, the building, and I'll make you invisible. We'll say you're behind the building. I really should have made this bet bigger. <laughs> and is that the end of your turn? Yes, it's the end of my turn. All right. On Lathana 5's turn, uh, it is going to... Uh, it can no longer see Zito, so it won't attack Zito. Instead, it's going to pepper Gort with arrows. On the first attack, a natural one. Second attack is a 17, and it hits. That's uh, eight plus. Oops. Plus a number, th another three. So Gort took eleven. I'll manually take another three off of that, and then we'll fire once more, once more into the breach, good friends. Why not? That's a critical hit. Uh, that's uh, 12 damage, which was partially absorbed by the temporary hit points that you gave Gort. So Gort only takes three damage from that hit. And it will continue to skitter step across the top of the roof, pulling out more arrows and knocking them towards Gort. And Lathana, it is your turn. All right, I have a question. Um... If, if I pulled out Humphrey the Fly mm -hmm. as in, spoke a command word as an action Correct Would I be able to speak the command word and climb on his back in uh, one turn or no? Uh, I mean mounting you could say uh, that's more of a free action with the environment normally um it, it, it's not so much a free action with the environment to mount a mount. So I would say you could spend some of your movement to get on there. I'm not really sure exactly what the rules are yeah. for getting on a mount. I think the ruling is half your movement speed. Okay, so yeah, okay. that makes sense. So yeah, if you spoke the command word, created Humphrey, uh, and boom, you can use half your movement to get on his back. All right, well, I pull Humphrey out from my uh, front pocket. Okay. I speak the word fly, fly, fly. And um, I will climb right on his back. And fortunately, I don't have Humphrey's stats. Oh, let me see. It's been so long since we've had Humphrey. <laughs> Probably have that saved. So let's find the giant fly information. And you wanted to leap on his back? Uh huh. Let's see. Oh, look at that. I do have his stats right here. So we'll put him in the combat tracker. There he is. And we'll 
make him not a bad guy. There we go. Okay. So using your half, you spoke the command word. Uh, Humphrey suddenly appears and its face morphs in the instant. Uh, instantaneously, you suddenly see a flash of your relative, uh, Baba Plaga, and she says, Ah, it's about time. It's stuck in that bag forever. And then it morphs back into the face of the insect uh, fly face. <laughs> nice. All right, so is it on Humphrey's turn? Does Humphrey have a turn? On Humphrey's uh, well, I would say for the the purposes of being on a mount, you use Humphrey's movement. Okay. So you've already used half of your movement. So we'll just say for the intents and purposes, you can use half of Humphrey's mo uh, movement. Okay. So theoretically, if he uses his full movement, Man. His full movement, he can fly up to 120 feet, so half okay. of his... But but that's if he used his action on his turn. Again, it, you're, you are using his movement, but it's essentially mounts move when you move. They don't have their own individual, like, uh, eight, uh, initiative use normally when you're on their back. So you can fly up to 30 feet, or he can skitter step walk 15 feet. Or you can double that if you do his action and movement, but I'm just gonna say this is just your movement, not getting, not to get too confused. Well, too confusing, we'll just say that. What would you like to do? Fly straight up in the air? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, my... It's okay, you haven't used this in a while. You can, uh, well, you can't really hold your action, so it's it's on you right now. Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Zito's Thanks. up next. Oh, okay, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, sorry, it cut out for like 45 seconds there. Okay, um, Lethana would move, I guess, 60 feet, if that's the mo what she can, uh, towards um, Lethana 3, towards the roof. So you're moving Humphrey 60 feet, correct? Uh, yep. Okay, you're just, mo you're just flying straight across the, the ground. You're not going up in the air? Um, she will angle towards landing on the roof. Okay, unfortunately you won't be able to get there. Using its movement and action. Actually, no, I'm wrong. You would be able to get there, so you want to be right next to it? Um, she'll go over to the kind of other side of the roof. Okay. So right here. Okay. So you're flying over there. Are you hovering above the roof a certain number of feet, or are you right there on the top of the roof? Um, she will land on the roof and okay. she'll kind of duck when she gets there, so she has like maybe partial cover from the Lathana one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll say we'll say uh, if, if you're on Humphrey's back, Humphrey's tall enough that um, you, you get partial cover. Okay. And is that the end of your turn? Uh, that is. Okay. Zito, it is your turn. You're currently hiding behind that square-shaped tower. Tower-like building. Yes. Uh, Zito is going to go into his bag. And he's going to pull out his last scroll, the scroll of Dark Star. Scroll of Dark Star, ooh. And he's going to try and cast that. Okay. 
How does that work? Well, let's first see if he gets it off first. Okay. It's not often that we see you guys use uh, scrolls. Uh, I think it's level 7 spell, if I remember correctly. Let me double check. Lothana and I dropped Humphrey stats on you for you. Ooh, it's a level 8 spell. Right. Level 8 spell. So it requires so, a skill check, correct? Uh, yes, uh, Arcana 18. Okay. Unfortunately, that is a 13. Yeah, I'm going to so, use my inspiration. You're going to use can your you inspiration? All right, you can use one of your inspirations. That's a 26. So, where did that go? Okay, it creates a sphere centered at a point. It can have up it's to a, a radius sphere. of 40 feet. Yeah, it can be up to. Mm -hmm. I think uh, 40 feet is going to be more than enough to okay. get Caster and the three Lathanas in the back. All right. If you want to go ahead and draw your mm -hmm. circle, you can. You're gonna get. You're gonna get Gort. R.I.P. Gort. <laughs> I don't think it does any. Oh. Yeah. Any creature that enters the spell area for the first time has to make a con save or die. Basically, yeah. Bye bye, Gort. Yep. First he wasn't very. He doesn't know how the spell works, so. Disintegrated. I guess. Yep. <laughs> All right. So if you want to uh, make uh, con saves. Oh, you got yourself you're targeting red. You're, you're targeting yourself and red, by the way. We're all going down. <laughs> this is very familiar. <laughs> by the way, he thinks. All right. Question: Before you before you cast this, question uh, for my magic users. Can you counterspell a spell scroll? Yes, you can, but I'm um, counterspell is, has a range of 30 feet. That's a I range think, um, of 60 feet. Oh, 60 feet? Mm -hmm. Then yeah, that he has to make a arcana check of this eight plus the spells level, or 10 plus the spells level. And did he notice him because he came out of hiding doing it? Uh, I wasn't hiding. Yeah, he just he just stepped out from behind the building because he wasn't using the hide action. He was just use, using the the term hiding, as in running behind. Yeah, you can oh, counterspell you. it. Okay, he will attempt to counterspell because he does not want that to go off. <laughs> I'll uh, counterspell. Is counterspell. You can't counterspell the counterspell, but thanks for the yes. The, yeah, you thanks, can. Thanks for the reference, Derek. Remember when I said that? You told me that I couldn't. You can counterspell a counterspell, but because I'm another, I'm another, so uh, it's hard to explain. I'm another wizard. So Zito is casting a spell. He casts a counterspell on his reaction. My reaction is to cast a counterspell on his reaction. Okay. Uh, with your per passive perception of 14, I will say that for the, this, for this particular thing, um, I'm not going to use per, uh, if you wanted to use your reaction, I'm going to require a skill check to see if you see you see Zito doing this because this is happening within six. This is happening within moments. No, I have to see him doing it. You have to see. So you I'm know, countering you don't his know counter that, spell. OK, so you're countering. You're looking at Caster and you're you're countering yeah. him doing the sigil for counter spell. OK, that's yeah. fine. Uh, what level are you count countering at? Oh, I'll do a three. A level three, so he still has to make a check, correct? 
Yeah, I mean, it depends on what he chooses as his counter spell. Okay. I guess you should have chosen one first, and then I would have obviously picked three. You wouldn't tell me that. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So So let's see. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, he's just going to do a level three. Okay, all you right. Would, you wouldn't know that what level I'm no, casting no, I, I, no, no. Yeah, you so wouldn't tell me. And so if you're just higher, doing, I have to roll a skill check. He just has to roll a skill check. Yeah. Okay. This is some old school Magic: The Gathering shit. So he has Hell to roll, yeah. He has to roll a uh, an intelligence check, an, Arca an Arcana check. Um, Arcana of eighteen. Arcana. Of, well, no, Arcana on you. He he but, has, but to it has to roll. It has to be the spell's level. It's 10 so plus the spell's level. I, yeah. Oh, that's right. I apologize. Let's see. Uh, he rolled a 25. So he has, I, I have to roll a check on your your counter spell, correct? Is, there a spell, is your uh, counter spell no, three it's... or lower? No, he's, uh, he's just rolling a straight... Uh, sorry. So yeah, no, it wouldn't. It would have just. It would have just gone off, correct? Because it's a yes. an eighth, eighth level spell. So no, it just goes off. So he tries to, and you just. Uh, it Gort hears him go. Oh shit! He last smiles from the corner. So you don't have to. Magic uh, is hard. <laughs> well, no, I was gonna say Eli. You don't have to kill that spell slot then, because his counter spell failed. Unless you were trying no, to kill no, no. him. No, I would out because you don't roll automatically. I countered it, so I have to use that spell slot. Okay. It doesn't matter you. if he six each or fails. My counter goes off before he tries. Right, but wouldn't? Sorry. Uh, because it's contested counter spell versus counter spell. Wouldn't I be rolling against your counter spell? Unless it's the same level. If you counter at a higher level, then yes, I would have to roll against yours. But okay. if we counter, if I counter at the same level as your counter spell, then no, we would not. And okay. I have to use it before you roll. If you okay, roll, so you, I, you get it. Okay, so you use your you you lose that spell slot. He lost that yes. spell slot, and now Zito can roll damage, or yes. roll, or I yes. should say roll roll the uh, the checks, the con save checks for all of them. Yeah, I have to choose the counter before it succeeds or fails. I got gotcha. you. There, there's no like cheating. Right, you know so we I mean? good now. We are good. Sorry about that. Yeah, Ryan. sorry. <laughs> it was Magic just the first time we did wizard versus wizard. This is the first time. Really, it's, I mean. it's that's a tri wizard tournament. Come on. All right. So Iker, I don't know why Iker's on there because Iker's dead. Uh, it just said he was so I just targeted them. Yeah, he's he he dead. So he he's already dead. Uh, you did uh twenty three damage. And obliterated. There's this now. This this black sphere uh, engulfing the building. Actually, the building that. Uh, let's see. Do do. I was just straight. Forty-seven damage. Okay, so that building um, from that uh, ability you just watched as you see expelling out from within that black sphere um, bits of the roof blasting out just out from the edges of this black sphere that you've created the dark star damn what happened and there's some more stuff to this any uh a creature with dark vision cannot see inside the sphere or from inside out right it's obscured um, their vision of, their vision is completely obscured yes yeah, so it's considered difficult terrain inside there okay um, they're immune to thunder damage. Oh, nice. They're also deafened, and they can't cast any spells that have a verbal component. Okay. And, you know, that's it. Other than they take... You have to make a constitution check at the start of their turn. Gotcha. You, um, you do realize that you put the damage on the wrong person, so uh, Gort is very dead. Uh, what do you mean I put it on the wrong person? You put it on Icker, you didn't put it on on Gort. Oh, whoops. So, I will drop that damage oh. onto him. Yeah, and also, if you die, you disintegrate. Uh, make it, actually, uh, I will, before I do that, 
I will go ahead and just roll a straight con save for him. That way you don't have to roll all that again. I guess Icker disintegrated by default then. Does a 16 pass? 16 does pass. Okay, so he'll take he'll take half of that damage. So that'll be 23, I believe. Sorry, 23. Yep. All right. Poor Gord. That's what he gets for giving right. me that look and standing up to me. Well, surprisingly, Gort survived. <laughs> You're on my turn there. Don't you lie, you can kill him. Okay. Uh, Music, it is your turn. A sphere of eternal darkness just suddenly blasted out, expanded out, and you just heard the sound of a roof-like structure um, beginning to be blasted apart from the building that's directly in um, in front of you to the northwest. Well, I'm going to assume that that asshole in there is probably still alive. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to lob a spell in there. Well, unfortunately, you can't see him. He's completely obscured from your view, so your spell wouldn't go uh, be able to reach it, reach him. I don't. I don't even have to see him to cast this spell. It's an area of effect. Um, what's the spell? Synaptic static. Let's see. I'm not even actually going to put it on him. I'm going to put it over to the left of where he was. Uh, Synaptic static is psychic, not not thunder. Okay. Uh, You choose a point within range. Doesn't necessarily say that you can see. But I would say that... Actually, you know what? I was hiding around the corner when this started. I'm not exactly sure where he was, so that's probably a bad idea. Yeah. I got a better idea. And Reg, you are on deck after this. Okay. So you're going to Eldritch Blast Lathana 3? Yep. Gotcha. Unfortunately, the All second right. one misses, but you did manage to inflict 10 force damage, blasting away a part of its black leather armor. Okay, let me check one more thing. Okay, that was my turn. I'll hold my reaction. Okay. Or bonus action. Okay. That is a hit. 26 most definitely hits. As you deal uh, 17 damage and lop its head off, and you hear a meaty thunk as it hits the roof and bounces off onto the ground next to you, um, you Zito, and you just see a decapitated metal Lathana head grinning with a rictus grin staring up at you. She will turn around to face Lathana 1 and swing recklessly at her as well. A 30 definitely hits. That's 20 slashing magical damage to Lathana 1. And then she will she will use her fangs to try to take a bite at her jugular. Go for it. Also recklessly. Unfortunately, nice. you miss. Your mouth snaps shut within just within uh, biting distance of this this dark archer. And that is it for me. Okay. Uh, in response, uh, this uh, cold assassin is going to attempt to stab you in the gut with its short sword, and it hits with a twenty-seven. It's uh. do reduce that down to three so i'll have to manually drop three damage on you 
Actually, we'll just reduce it from here. There we go. That was its first attack, and then attempts to stab at the again two more times. Uh, hitting once again. Uh, once again, partially resisted and absorbed. And then for its third attack, it hits once again a 27. Also re reduced and absorbed into your temporary hit points. Those temporary hit points really come in handy, don't they? Okay. And that's the end of its turn. Eli, it is your turn. Uh, there is a... Uh, someone stirring on the ground you heard it flump into the uh the soft earth right behind you you turn around and look it's one of those archers um do i know if she's friendly or not you do not ah! <laughs> I will unless, zap her. unless unless music was yelling out hey i just crown of madness that chick you wouldn't necessarily know well yeah i I yelled I got a pet when I zapped her the first time, but I never actually pointed out which one it was, so you wouldn't, uh... Oh man, she's a melee range too. It's true. Ah, uh, it's a 24. Eli, you're you using his prone. staff of power. Yeah, that's yep, a... The she should be prone. So she should be automatic critical. No, it's not an automatic critical if you're prone, unless you are unconscious or um, paralyzed or stunned. It's just advantage, but I don't just think advantage it's on the attack. Than you can try. You want to roll an attack again, see if it was a crit. That's a one. Yeah, I'll take the nineteen. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I whacked her for six. That's the end of your for turn. Three. Yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, it is Humphrey's turn. Uh, Humphrey's used his movement on your turn, Lathana. Uh, so he still has his action. I don't think he has actually has any actions. He's he's basically just a, a steed. So he's, oh, one he's, second. He's, gotcha. I forgot Lathana six is still hexed. She should have taken one d six necrotic damage from Derek's attack. Also. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been forgetting that this whole time. She should have also taken it from the fall. <laughs> All right. We'll just say she's got six more damage on her since since she's been attacked and bullied by all of you. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Lathana's two's turn. We already took the damage from that 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 dark star, so I won't do it again. You know that that damage is supposed to happen on their turns. Um, is there anything uh, else that happens? It says to it? it happens. It happens. Well, it's, it says it happens when they first enter. So when it, when they cast a spell, that's their first enter, and then at the start of their next turn. Right, their next turn, not this not this round, correct? No, it's the first time they enter, and then at the start of the next turn. Hmm, that's a crazy spell. Level that's eight, also right? An eight level spell. Yeah. It's like it well it reads any creature that enters the spell's area for the first time or, on no, a it turn says, or, or start. starts its turn. Yeah, it, it's either on the first on the turn or starts its turn. Yeah, so it takes the the con save again. All right, so that's the only one that's targeted. Yeah, because it says uh, it says for the uh, when for the it uh, any creature that enters the spell area for the first time on a turn. Or starts its turn has to make the save. Dang. Uh, okay. So well, it well, is nice. dis it is disintegrated. Holy crap, dude! And I'm ready to walk around and just find magic items. Oh no! I, you just put it on the right. <laughs> Ryan, I love you, man, but you keep putting damage on the wrong people. That was the only one that was targeted. Right. Mm. But it, this was Lathana 2's turn, and you put the damage on oh, Lathana 5. Oh, about all I can see from my combat tracker is Lathana. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put Lathana 2 on that roof. How about that? That works. Okay, so 
Retcon. <laughs> All right. Five is dead. Uh, it's Lathana th Six's turn. Lathana Six um, uh, does a flip up using half its movement to stand up and looks around for a target. Lathana One. sees Lathana One. It's going to take a pop shot off on Lathana One. And it hits. Good girl. She's getting a cookie letter. Dealing eight damage to Lathana One. Uh, it now it needs to make a save, correct? Yep, at disadvantage. At disadvantage, all right. What's the save for it? Wisdom. Wisdom save, gotcha. All right. A 14, does that save? Nope. Okay, it's she's still under your um, your oogly boogly uh, influence. Lucky her. All right, Gort. Uh, Gort's gonna make con save. He fails. Bye, Gort. Uh, Gort is just gone. You guys don't hear anything. And now it's Caster's turn. Caster needs to make a save. He succeeds. Uh, and he takes uh, 17 force damage. Uh, Caster suddenly appears immediately above this uh, rocketing up out of the dark sphere like Superman and is now floating above it. He uses full action to fly above it. So we'll say he is... See, that's... Uh... How many feet up? He's uh, gone up 55 feet in the air. Is that ability with concentration? No, it's just, he just flew. Damn. Yeah. Remember, er everything in that area is difficult terrain. So if he just flew up, he'll have to fly up 80 feet to get out. Everything in the area, but is the sphere yeah. difficult terrain? Yeah. Let's see. Do. Oh, wow. That is crazy. All right. Well, in that case, uh, he said it. He would. He'd have to. Uh, it would be half his movement then. So he only flew up thirty feet. Let me reduce that area of effect. So he is now not quite out of the woods yet, but he is thirty feet up, higher than what he was before. So he's not quite out of the darkness, so he'll take. He'll have to do that con save on his turn again. And. That is his turn. Can't do anything else. Red, it's your turn. Hello, Red. Are you still there? Did we lose Red? Can you hear me? Hi. There we go. I don't know what was happening to my mic. No worries. Um, as always, I will attack recklessly. Recklessly, she attacked. On Lathana 1. Go for it. Why do you keep attacking Lathana? Because she's being a jerk to me. <laughs> That's uh, 17 damage on your first attack, successfully slashing into her with your great sword. Uh, you hit once again on a 19, and that's 16 more slashing magical damage. And you hit with your fang attack. 
Uh, but it is apparently completely resistant to your piercing attack. Resistant. And that's it for me. Or I should say, uh, immune, not resisted. My teeth hurt a little bit from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, imagine if you bit a toaster. <laughs> Yeah, word is done. Okay. Uh, Zito, if you want to roll the con save for Lathana 2. What's funny is it, they're completely muffled, right? So no sound is coming out of this? Or is it they just can't hear? No, you can't hear anything. Okay. Yeah, you, you can't hear anything coming. In. <laughs> yeah, guys, no sound can come out or in. You guys can't hear anything right now. Uh, and yeah, uh, Lathana 2 is toast. And music, it is your turn. Caster's 80 feet up. Uh, you don't know where Caster is. Oh, I didn't see him come out the top? No. I, it's, no, he's it's still difficult. inside the sphere. Yeah, it's difficult terrain, so he's still inside of the sphere. Oh, that changes everything. Okay. Well, it's time for that good old Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. That's a critical hit. Uh, partially resisted because it, as Red found out, they seem to be immune to critical hits. Okay. And your second attack also hits as you blast forth your Eldritch Blast, arcing out, hurling it like a softball into the creature. Okay, and I will end my turn. All right. Uh, so, Lothana, you can have Humphrey do his movement action now, or you can say that he is holding his action until you decide to do something with him. Um, here we have hold his action. Okay. Uh, Lufana one's turn. It's looking really, really bad. Uh, all of the ar- almost all of the armor around the chest area is flaked and torn and peeled back and you just see, it doesn't even look like the form of a female. It's just this autonomous, uh, oily metal structure and it will attempt to stab at thee with its short sword critically failing with its first attack but hitting on its second attack and uh, dealing 10 damage resisted and absorbed and it attacks once again but rolls another natural one automatically missing you that's the end of its turn. Lathana six. What would Lathana six like to do? Attack Lathana one once again. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a hit. There is a thunk crunch noise as an arrow sticks straight into the side of this this mechanical being's head. You just watch as it rocks its head back and it's hood becomes completely free from this wiry brillo pad like hair that's sticking out of its construct head you just see this like blank expression of your the familiar sight of your companion lathana in a metallic form as it is quite dead and lathana it is your turn oh i uh, need to, I need to roll for uh, lathana six yep and also uh if she fails this time um, next turn, if she doesn't acquire a new enemy, she reverts back to normal. Okay. Uh, does a 16 pass? It does not. Good lord, what is your DC, sir? I believe it's 17. That is insane. Charisma for the win. That is some... That is some mighty charisma, sir. Yeah, I wasn't playing around. And Double check that with me. Is that right? It's uh, five plus your per, plus your proficiency bonus plus eight, if I'm not mistaken. For uh... so yeah, that'd do it, wouldn't it? Thirteen plus yeah, uh, four. It's eighteen. That's, that's seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. All right, Lathana, well, it's your turn. Uh, there is no more enemies that you can see on the field. You just watched this other Lafana crumble to the top of this roof, nearly falling over the edge. Now half of its body hanging over the edge. 
and you don't see any any attackers you see that black sphere we didn't really uh, determine whether or not that was a dome centered on the ground or if it was raised above uh, Ryan um I wouldn't say it's a dome I'd say it would be uh, maybe about like, centered like 10 feet off the ground okay Lesana will move closer to Red. Okay. Or she will instruct Humphrey to crawl over to Red. Okay. And then... So uh, you want Humphrey to take its, <laughs> a its movement action to crawl over to Red. Uh, and right behind her. So like right... Uh, yeah. Behind her. Like... To the west of her or to the south of her? To the south. And um, Humphrey would give her the little uh, shoulder massage. Okay. <laughs> it's a very, it's kind of weird, but I these... I a little bit, though. <laughs> you're used to being um, bludgeoned and slashed by bugs. This one is trying to give you a shiatsu massage. Uh, would you like to do uh, anything would... else, Nathana? <laughs> uh, she will um, hold an arrow, notch an arrow and aim it towards the black sphere and hold her to action. Okay. Uh, in that case, Eli, it's your turn. Well, uh, Eli is going... Can I climb? Uh, you can make a climb check. But you yeah, also, you also gonna... have the ability to fly with your cloak, if you remember. I'm, I use it already. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's true. I'm gonna I'm gonna cast a spell, fly. Okay. So now you have a fly and ability. Fly onto the roof. Gotcha. Uh, the we'll structure. Get away from that the the structure doesn't really seem too sound when you when you're flying. If you're are you setting foot on on it or are you just hovering there? I'll uh, test it out. I'll put my foot on it and see if it like, falls down. Uh, it feels like a vibration in the wood. Yeah, I'm gonna stay fact, flying. At, at this point, it feels like uh, it, it feels like it's just it's just bowing a little bit when you test it with your foot. Yeah, I'm gonna stay flying here. I'm gonna I, I'm just getting away from the thunder sticks here. Okay. And All I'm right. on my turn right there. Okay. Uh, caster's turn. Go ahead and roll that save for me, Zito. He succeeds. And. Uh, you don't hear it, unfortunately. Um, but Caster has just been disintegrated. And one second. Do... Got to do something here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to reveal something so that you can uh, make it do a saving throw. Zito. We'll just say for the intent, this intents and purposes, uh, it's going after you. So go ahead and uh, target what I just revealed. Uh, it succeeds. Uh, so it takes 26 damage. And it is your turn. All right. Uh, Zito is going to use his action to bring out his turret. Okay. He's going to have it set up next to him. It's going to be the turret of protection to give him a temporary hit points. Gotcha. All right. And is that all you do? Do you have anything else that you want to do with bonus action or main action? Uh, pulling up the turret is my main action. 
Gotcha. Okay. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. Uh, on this uh, strange creature's turn, uh, go ahead and roll that uh, con save again. Okay, it succeeds. Takes 29 damage reduced down. And it is going to fly up. Do do. You said it. You you did that at forty, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Assuming that if it's coming out from caster, I'll say it has more than enough movement to get out of the, the sphere. Okay. So I'll say it's fifty feet up in the air. Uh, you all see this suddenly appear out of that blackness, inky blackness, this uh, four-armed ending in pincers, no visible face or head, and just this long snake-like tail that trails out behind it and curls up protectively away from the sphere like it knows the damage that has been done to it. And let's see if it gets back its ability. Shit, it does not. So it's going to do... Oh, why the hell not? Hmm... Gotta create another one. Can it reach? Just barely reach, just barely makes it, I think. Yep. Uh, so it's going to attempt to cast fear on you, Red. So if you would be so kind as to roll a wisdom saving throw. Unfortunately, that is not going to do it. Would you like to use an inspiration point? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, you see in your mind suddenly, you just hear this, this voice creeping into your mind, just saying... Yes, you'll do. And you just see, it's like reality suddenly melts. And you just see this endless realm of floating bubbles. And in within the bubbles, you just see terrible atrocities being committed against the shifter community. And you see your friends, your shifter friends and relatives growing up all being tortured and murdered over and over again, and you are currently frightened. And that's its turn. And Lathana 6's turn, so it no longer has anything that it can see at the moment. Um, I'd like to... Shoot, I should have said it earlier, <laughs> but I'd like to use my reaction as soon as I see it. Well, not but your reaction. Your held, your held action, you can take a, a, a shot on it. Go yes. for it. Um, Alright, she would like to sharpshoot this creature. Okay. Uh, she... With right next to red, she has advantage. Uh, on melee attacks, I don't know if you have advantage on ranged attacks with her ability. She has to be within five feet of the creature, not you within five feet oh, of her. Oh, of the creature. Oh, yeah. Dang it. That sucks. Okay. Yeah, okay. you you have advantage on ranged attacks if if she's like toe to toe with a monster or an enemy. Dang it. 
Oh, that would have been so nice. Okay, whatever. Um, she would uh, sharp shoot the creature. Okay. Unfortunately, a 14 misses. All right. End of turn. Okay. And uh, you said that if it can't see an enemy to attack, it reverts back to itself music? That is correct. If it doesn't see the new enemy, then it reverts. Yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, that big giant sphere of darkness is blocking its view. So it's going to, it's looking around. It sees you and it grins. Shifting metal plates of its face. It's not a solid, you know, skin membrane. Just see it shifting. It's almost like a perversion of a Warforge, but closer to a humanoid than you've ever seen before. And it okay. turns, looks at you, and it starts plugging you with its its longbow. Your first attack goes off. You take uh, ten plus three more, so that's three more damage on you. And its first attack, and its second and third attacks both. The second one hits, dealing 11 damage to you, and then the third one misses. Okay. Uh, and then it is going to begin to run over this way. It better. Let's just get into a better position. You see it now f- uh, f- fingering the uh, tip, the edges of the feathered edges of its arrows, its black arrows. And Lathana, it is your turn again. If you hover your cursor over this weird creature, uh, mm-hmm. it says caster, question mark. Does Lefana recognize this as a cold drive? Um, you are getting a sense that whatever this is, it stands to reason may have came out of your cousin. Lithana will reach into her bag and notch her arrow of slaying. An arrow? You're you're gonna use your Korai arrow? Ah, uh, yes, I am. Okay. She uh, she still has her hunter's mark on it too. So. Okay. Well, you had <laughs> unfortunately you had your hunter's mark on Caster. It is not on this creature. Oh, all right. So well, she'll use her bonus action to move to it move to. it on. Move it on her. Okay. Move it on to whatever. Moving this is. on up. And uh, she will shoot it. Go uh, for it. Uh, come on. Mark. No, not going to. Because I have to make it hit. Sorry, I'm talking to Derek. That's okay. <laughs> I, I hear um, Derek. Hi, Derek. Hello. Uh, okay, I only have a... Wait, so if I'm using this arrow, it says plus four, but if I use it in my repeating longbow... Yeah, I just realized that I... Humphrey was supposed to make a save against that fear spell. Oh. Whoopsie. I'll, on his turn, I'll have him make a save. So if I'm using my repeating longbow to shoot it, do I get the specs of my repeating longbow? Or do I have to use what's next uh, to the arrow slam? You're, uh, well, the repeating longbow creates, magically manifests um, an arrow. Okay. Correct, uh, Ryan? Uh, yes, but she can also load it herself. Okay. I'll let you decide whether she can add that plus one to that plus four. I would say no. Vice versa. I, I would say you'd get the plus on the on the 
the hit, but not necessarily the damage. Okay, so, sorry, so just for, for targeting and shooting it, can I shoot it with my, using my repeating shot and then damage it with the arrow? Or do I have to use the whatever is next to the arrow sling? I guess that's that's my question. <laughs> You'll get the bonus to hit. You won't get the bonus to damage, or for, okay, for the perfect. for the repeating bow. That's all I needed. All right. Moment of truth. That's a hit. Oh my gosh! A hit. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Actually, <laughs> I'm gonna turn that into a natural twenty. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and uh, roll damage, and we'll double it. Eli looks over as the arrow. He sees the special arrow, and he will change reality and make that a critical hit. Okay. So the damage is—I don't have a dice for it. If the creature belongs to a Korai, the creature must take a DC 17 Constitution saving throw. Yep. So, so uh, that the hold on a second. Uh, takes damage from the arrow. It takes extra damage. So roll your regular damage to hit. Okay. Regular damage. So that would be just. Uh, uh, just just roll roll damage from what a, a normal longbow attack on your sheet. Okay. And we'll double that. Okay. He succeeds on his concentration check. I didn't know he was concentrating. Oh yeah, he was on the fear. So he will, uh, let's see, that's 13 more damage. Let me add that so on him 26 manually. Six, if it's critical. Correct, so I'm, I, he's already taken 13, so I'm going to add another 13 okay. to him. In one second to calculate that. Math is hard. And now he has to make a constitution saving throw. Yes. Uh, which he passes. Okay, so he takes... Half of the, half of the damage. D10. Uh, yes. No, it's it's sixty ten. Oh, th- sixty ten, but then half of whatever. Yep. It is. So go ahead and roll six. Just okay. roll a flat sixty ten, and then I'll put the damage on him manually. Isn't that a critical too? It says yep. roll for criticals all, so it'd be a. Yep. So it would be ha- a double would have been double of forty six, so he takes forty six more damage. Okay. You have rocked Dang, him. Too bad he failed. Too bad he failed, bro. I mean, oh. <laughs> but it was it was still good. It was still good. It was still was good. It was, still it was so good. good. There's just this brilliant beam of light. Your arrow suddenly turns into this red, angry-looking thing, and it carves into the chest section of this creature, and it looks very hurt. Like whole sections of it are crumbling off and disappearing into this black sphere below it. It almost seems like it's with its bottom two arms it's trying to hold its intestines or whatever it's composed of together at the mo- at the moment. It does not look very happy. Um, does it still have its uh, concentration up? After still taking ha- that damage? It still has a concentration up. Oh, oh, did my uh hmm, did my hunter's mark go on that? It did not. Uh, hold on a second. Let me actually know it did. One D eight plus two D six. Longbow damage. Okay, cool. Um, so she's actually. I have. No I don't know why, but you had you had it on you twice, for some reason. Oh. So, the hunter's mark is one D six, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'll just subtract two damage from that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And so I have one more attack. I should. Yes, I do have one more attack, I think. Go for it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just nervous. Um, it's okay. All right. As you are notching the arrow, Othana, you begin to hear a voice in your head saying, 
in Caster's voice. I have seen past the farthest star, and I have gone to the edges of the universe. I can take you there if you so choose. I can give you all the things you never knew you wanted. Taste from the tallest chalice. Dine at the largest hall. All I ask in return is your vessel. Your vessel for a chance at a life without pain, without heartache. All of this I can give to you and more, just for your vessel. And now you can take your attack. You just hear this, it's it's repeating this over and over he- again in your head. It feels like when you drink something really cold. That's a hit. Did that... I'm targeting him, right? Okay. Yeah. And he succeeds yet again on his concentration check. As you deal 10 piercing magical damage to him. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end. Okay. Music, you're up. All right. So you've got uh, the other Lathana, which you had dominated before previously, is pegging you with arrows. Uh, and you can see now, um, from your position, I would say that you should be able to see Caster. You're far enough back, you can just barely see him. It doesn't matter. I can't hit shit tonight. Okay. So you uh, quickly, after being pegged a few times with arrows, you just like try to quickly blast Lathana, the Lathana clone, hitting the ground near its feet. Bits of the peat-like earth blasting up in the air where it hits. Uh, let's do a fear save for Humphrey. Humphrey is very sad. Humphrey is going to fly 120 feet away from Caster with you on his back because you said you you did not say you got off of him. Nope, I'm still on him. Yeah, so uh, suddenly Humphrey just makes this weird squeaking noise uh, and lifts you up in the air violently flying away with you. We'll say that he flew southwest 120 feet. And you're now looking around as you're flying away, the wind whipping you in the face. You turn around and you can see um, in the distance, you can see various places which are on fire. And you can also see regiments of humanoids marching in the distance up the street to where you are all battling this thing. And in answer to your question, uh, the fear... Uh, it says that you take the dash action and you move away from, uh, by the safest available route on each of your turns, unless there is nowhere to move. Um, when you end your turn in a location where you don't have line of sight, um, you can make another wisdom save. And Z... So I'm off the map right now? Really? Uh, not... Uh, it's not your... I don't think it's, uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you would have had to have run as well, so... Yeah. Okay. What's your full movement? You you have the climb ability, so you don't have to roll a check to, to climb off the roof. Unless you Absolutely. wanted to... <laughs> unless you think she would jump jump off the roof. She'd probably climb. She's not that silly. Okay. So we'll say, yeah, um... Minus, uh... I think it was... This, this roof was, like, ten feet high... So just subtract 10 from your maximum movement and you would move southwest away. And then uh, on your next turn, you'll be able to roll that save so to see if you're no longer <clears throat> afraid. Okay. And Zito, it's your turn. All right, seeing that- You just heard the sound of a- ju- of the- <laughs> You heard the sound of membranous wings and, uh, and Lathana go, whoa, as she is yanked to the southwest by her flying mount. There's too many bugs for Zito. Uh, he's going to look at the one that just came out of the giant dark hole, and he's going to cast uh, Scorching Ray at 5th level. Go for it. That's a hit. 
That's a miss. That's a miss. That's also a miss. That's uh, four damage. It passes its con save or con check once again. Is that the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. Let me just delete this pointer. All right. So the, the creature is going to fly over. Well, first, let's see if it gets its ability back. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to roll it so you guys can see. Just, just so I'm not, doesn't seem like I'm cheating. It does not get its ability back. And it's going to fly over here. Actually, no. It'll fly right here. And... It looks down. Well, if it had eyes, it would look. And suddenly these beams of light begin to come out of its pincers towards you, Zito. It is angry. Super nettled. It's 50 feet up in the air, Derek. You take uh, three damage. You failed your con check. Uh, what? What happened? Uh, it fired a magic missile at you out of its pincer claw. Uh, I'm gonna cast shield. You're gonna cast shield. Well, this shield automatically uh, blocks magic missile. Oh, okay. Does it block just the first one, or does it block all of them? It's it'll block all of them. It stays up to the end of my turn. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, the sphere is still there. And that will be the end of its turn. Eli, it is your turn. You just saw, watched as this thing began floating overhead in the morning sun, this massive arms and a snake-like tail and little beams of light blasting and bouncing off of the arcane shield manifested by Zito. I'm going to uh, move. I'm going to fly down. Okay. Back down. So you're flying I'm going back to, to the yeah. ground. And I'm going to cast Big B's hand right next to the creature. Big B's hand. And it is going to attempt to grapple the creature. Okay. So a giant hand just appears next to the creature. Uh, so how's that work? Um, we have a strength contest. What's the um, strength of the... Uh, 26. Of, like so it's plus a, 8. Plus 8. So D20 plus 8. Okay. So 15 plus 8. Yep, he fails. It is grappled, so its movement is zero. And Bigsby's hand is going to go right back into the Dark Star. Okay. I don't know. Let me see how much movement it has. 
as a bonus action, I know I can move it. Um, does your Bigby's hand have like uh, hit points, or anything like that? Um, I have no idea. That's a good question. I didn't think of this. The hand is an object that has an AC of 20 hit points equal to your hit point maximum. If it drops to zero, the spell ends. So, in terms of it having to make a, a saving throw, does it does it have a saving throw attached to it, or does it just roll your saving throw? It has a dex of zero. Um, true, it has no con. So, does that mean... That just means you, you would roll without any sort of uh, ability, like uh, extra additional like pluses so it'd just be a straight d20 roll i believe so yeah okay. uh ryan if you want to roll uh that beautiful bean footage for dark star on both okay uh the creature fails uh red you are no longer frightened And it moves 60 feet, so it's going to shove it right down 60 feet. Okay. So we'll, we'll say... You mean 30 feet? It would be 30 feet. Yeah, yeah, true. Yep, yep. 30. Yeah, I forgot. All right. And then roll. I don't... It has my hit points. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, 74. Uh, 45 damage. Did you roll you a d20? Roll a con? You got to roll a con for it. Yep. Roll d20. Seven. Oh, seven. does it make it? Yeah, it does make it. So it'll take half oh, it damage. Does. Oh yes, let's go, Bigsby's hand. Let's go. <laughs> so we'll we'll say twenty three damage on your Bigsby's hand. And while it's grappled, it also does like a crushing attack. Uh, does it have an action to do the the crushing attack? Because you use your action to grapple it. Oh, hold on. Let me, yeah, true. When the hand is grappled, the target, you can do use a bonus. Okay, never mind. I use a bonus action to move, so you're right. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Is that the end of your turn? It is. Okay. Othana, it is your turn. Um, Humphrey is still blasting away. Like, he, you're you're on his back. Um, so, what would you like to do? He's He's rushing away. Actually, no. He's no longer afraid. He failed his his con his concentration check for both of them. Oh, great! So okay. yeah, he he was like making this strange trilling noise that you'd never heard from him before. And then it oh. stops. He's heaving heavily and now is looking confused, like looking around. And you can now oh, see clearly, Luthana, a regiment of soldiers marching up the street from the south. From your position. Can I make out what they look like? Make a perception check. All right. Um, I will instruct Humphrey to fly back full speed. Okay. Um, and while he's doing that, she will take a close look at the soldiers. Okay. So before, um, if you want to use on your turn now, since it's your turn, um, to use his movement, you can. And you can make the perception okay. check. Okay, uh, so you see you see uh, rows of individuals they look like well, I'll share it with you so you can only see it. They look like this. And a couple of them look like they're carrying uh, something that resembles rifles. And your travels, you're familiar with firearms. You've heard the stories Zito has told about building firearms. So we'll say that you're right here. I'll go ahead and pop you and Humphrey back on the map. You now still have your action. Okay. You no longer see right. any any sort of uh, sight of that horrible pincered arm creature. And you can hear it screaming in your head in pain. All right. Um, I 
right, I will uh, notch an arrow, hold my action. Okay. And then Zito, it's your turn. All right. Zito is going to cast uh, Cure Wounds on himself at fourth level. Okay. Is that all you do on your turn? Oh, you just healed Caster. Uh, yes. You just healed the bad guy. No, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I just I took it off of him, but yeah, you just healed the bad guy. What's going on tonight? <laughs> We're rusty, okay? <laughs> this is a big fight, okay? So. It's true. Do you want me to reroll or do you want me to just add 20 to my hit points? Just add 20 to your hit points and you're good. I'll be my turn then. Okay. Uh, Humphrey doesn't have any sort of action. He already did his full movement. You said you wanted him to double move, right? Dash? So in that case, the other Luthana is going to continue to fire at music. Uh, you pass your concentration check music. I don't know why you have a concentration check on you. I don't know either. That's weird. It's probably doing concentration for my hex. Oh, okay. Which isn't really a thing. Well, you're still, you're still passed. Uh, it hits you three times. Uh, but you pass your concentration check each time, so your hex is still out there. All right. And it's your turn. I'm tired of this bitch. I'm casting heat metal at level five. Okay. It fails. And it resists uh, a, a bit and only takes 14 resisted down from 15. Did you want to hold the concentration on that? Yeah, it's the fifth level. I'm going to keep holding it. Okay. In that case, Red, it is your turn. You are no longer afraid. Red will dash back um, as far as she can to, like, um, the general area, like, in between the two buildings. Not back okay. up to the roof. Uh, what's your, what's the, uh, your double movement? Uh, 80. 80. Okay. So do you want to just, like, be right next to Zito? Yeah, that's fine. All right. There you are. You're next to Zito. And that is all that's I can it. do. All right. Eli, it's your turn again. Big B's hand takes damage. Big B's hand takes damage. Okay. Roll a contract. Tw uh, just a flat d20. That's a failure. Uh, so yep. go ahead and roll the damage. Uh, just uh, don't target anyone and just roll the Dark Star damage there, Zito. All right. Okay, so 38. It's almost dead. It has 61 damage, right? Yeah. It's 38 plus, uh, I forget how much it took last time. I think it was half of... 23. Uh, 20, it took 23. 23. Gotcha. Okay, so that's... Yeah. I'm track of it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, bonus action. Shove it down even more. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're press, oh! pressing it into the ground. Basically. Holding it down. All right. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because I got to concentrate on it. Go ahead and roll your your uh, your dark star on caster. It succeeds. It'll take half damage. Uh, you kept hearing in your mind, Lathana, and now all of you are hearing in your mind over and over again. All hail the dreaming dark. I shall return. And then nothing. And you are all out of combat. No, we're not. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so as you're you're standing in, the, how long does that dark sphere last, Zito? 
It lasts for one minute. Oh, okay. So at, it it is. We'll say that it's it's gone now. A few moments have gone by. You have enough time to like collect yourselves, and then as you're all collecting yourselves, um, checking your gear and making sure everything it was red. You actually dropped your sword, so it's on top of that roof. Yeah, I'll climb back up. Okay, um, you can all now feel tremors in the ground. Oh shit. As this entire place is shaking, the ground is shaking. You can hear sounds of things like falling in the distance. And behind you all, you can now all see the same image of this regiment of individuals who are marching up the street. And I'll share the image with all of you so you can see. A familiar stone armored and soldiers they look very similar if not exactly like the ones you saw in Zarashak at the Shogun's um, compound and a couple of them are carrying these long uh, board rifles that they have slung down at the ready I'm just going to kill Lathana 6 real quick okay <laughs> we'll say that it's dead sorry I totally forgot about her. <laughs> yeah, I was going to kill her on my turn anyway. No worries. We'll say she's dead. She didn't have much left in her. Uh, and as you are, you all now hear a voice emanating from that cluster of individuals. You hear a voice say, Citizens of Hartham, please stay in your homes. The Shogunate is here to stop the violence and root out the terrorists. Please, do not interfere or you may be met with detainment. And the soldiers are still far enough away, you're not sure if they notice you yet. What would you all like to do? Hey, Eli, are we going to fight these guys? Um, well, we'll see what the rest think, but uh, I definitely want to search the ashes. Uh, question, uh, disintegrate. It disintegrates everything it except magical everything. item, except magical items. Except for magical items. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, you want to, you want to loot that real quick then? Yes, I do. Cause it's pretty easy. <laughs> okay. I will Everything drop it's all... wearing and carrying except magical uh, items. Yeah. I will drop, I'll drop it into your, your, uh, well, so magical items so like how about like coins and like gemstones that sort of thing oh well, that's all gone that's, that's, that's all gone oh, okay yeah. i'll delete that and i'll delete that and i'll delete that i'm so sorry and is it magical yeah, no. yeah i mean <laughs> it's gone no only magical items oh that means you don't get his spell shard spell shard is technically a magical item Spell shard? Yeah. Magic. Uh, a spell book technically is a magic. Oh, you're right. It is magic. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, you found a couple of uh, what looks like potion bottles, Eli, and a very familiar looking spell shard. I I'll sweep your, that up. I dropped those in your inventory. Oh, that's gold! <laughs> All right. Uh, the individuals are continuing to walk. They're not running but they're marching up the road and there is another individual who is not dressed like them seems to be um it's just sort of like walking in between the rows of individuals and is looking around and uh the voice that you heard definitely sounded feminine i cast greater invisibility by the way okay what are the rest of you doing Um, Give me a moment, I just need to make sure my my inventory is correct. I just need to delete my spell you, scrolls. I'll tell you what, uh, if you guys would like to take a break, you can. It's been over two hours. Sure. That'll give everyone time to like react to what they want to do. 
We can oil our rusty brains. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I will. Oh, and we'll level you guys up to eleven when you get back. Because you guys are level oh. eleven now. Well, when you say it like that, we don't want to go. You each, uh, received three thousand and twenty experience points for that encounter. Wow. And you guys are so lucky that I didn't get off my possession because I was about to possess the most powerful person in the group and wreck y'all's shit. I didn't even think you, you saw know? me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys fight amongst yourselves who the most powerful person in the group is. It me. I'll just say I create a black hole in the middle of town. Yeah, what the fuck? After that uh, disappeared, you notice that half of that building is gone. <laughs> so is the other one that the other two were standing on. Oh. And there's a crater in the ground. Yay, relentless rage. <laughs> now you will not kill me. Ever and uh, is your big hand gone as well, uh, Derek? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I can I'll cast it again, it. but yeah. Okay. So you guys have leveled up. You've in, you've got your extra hit die. You do not get any spells, or you get the spell slots, but you don't get any any spell slots. Leveling up doesn't like and doesn't just uh, refresh you like a, a long rest or a short or even a short rest. Just gives you a bit of extra. Gives you the new spell slots and it gives you the the extra. Um, hit die and, and new hit dies. What about my ability of flash of genius? Uh, you should have flash of genius. The general idea when, when you level up is that you would take like a rest to like figure out all your stuff. At the very least, a short rest, depending on the ability that you're that you're trying to do, whether it be, um, you know, learning a new spell. Derek, are you still trying to level yourself up? I got it. You got it? Because it's not showing up on mine. Oh, never mind. There it is. I had to just do it the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned. Looks like everyone is done except for Ashley. Unless Ashley wants the multi-class. No, I just don't actually know how to level up on here. Oh, you want me to level you up? Yes, please. All right. Boom. You got your Relentless Rage added to you. Your average hit points went up. You now have a Relentless Rage. Relentless rage. Haha. -ha. Your rage can like keep you from fighting. Captain America. If you drop to zero hit points while you're raging and don't die outright, you can make a con save. If you succeed, you drop to one hit point. I can do this all day. <laughs> she can do this all day. Alright. Well, if we're all back and we're all leveled up, we can continue. Can one more spell, or I can just we can continue and I'll pick the spell. Okay, that's up to you guys. The ground still trembles occasionally, as you're all, you've all gathered your your belongings. Did you all just? Are you guys just still in the middle of the street as these? these uh, individuals in armor are walking up the street? Uh, I would like to like go stand right in the middle. Okay, I don't so like this vibe. You're, you're standing in the middle of the, sh of the street? Yeah, like waiting for them. Okay, well, what about the rest of you all? <laughs> I'm invisible, standing off to the side. <laughs> okay, music is invisible. Cedo we're... is going to uh, hide behind the corner of the half uh, building, and he's going to pull out his gem of a uh, earth 
Or elemental. Okay. Let me double check that. Are you going to use it, or are you just holding it, like, just in uh, case? Yeah, he's going to... He's going to start to use it. It, kind of, it takes a minute to summon an Earth Elemental. Okay. We'll get back to you in a moment. What about you? You were about to speak, Luthana. Um, Luthana will stand to the side. Actually, she's still disguised as an <laughs> orc. Uh, you're, you're on the back of... You're, <laughs> oh. you're, you're still wearing your makeup and uniform, unless that was magic. Because disguise self, how long does that last? Uh... One hour. Okay. It's probably been like half an hour, right? No, it's not even been that. This this fight didn't take okay. that long. You guys wrecked the city. <laughs> I wonder if it if that dark star is what's causing all these tremors, guys. Yeah, it couldn't be. Yeah. Seems unrealistic. So Humphrey is still with you. You're still on Humphrey's back or nearby. Um, uh, yeah, she's still on Humphrey's back. Okay. What about you, Eli? Um, right there in the ground. I see everyone kind of trying to hide, right? You see Red just standing in the middle of the street, holding aloft. Uh, uh, are you armed, Red, or is your sword sheathed? I'm armed. Okay. Holding her sword aloft. Um, what are we doing? And again, you you hear the uh, that same thing that was that was said before. They repeat it, and I'll I'll just put, throw it in the chat for you guys. Well, if music's hiding, I'm gonna hide too. Well, you don't see music, so he's he's no he. You didn't see him turn invisible. He's just not there. I'll turn invisible too. You're gonna turn invisible. Okay. The soldiers continue to march up the street. Uh, most of them appear to be armed with like these uh, heavy maces. They're wearing the stone armor, except for two of them, which are wearing like uh, similar armor, but they're carrying these long barreled rifles at the ready. And you can see now. A human female wearing very, very flowy silk attire. She's wearing this deep um, rose-colored um, dress. And she has this um, metal headdress on her head. She has electric blue hair framed by this uh, a dark uh, metal headdress which is sticking up at angles and in, in different angles and as they're they're walking up the road um, the woman looks looks to all of you and the soldiers are now pointing and saying clear out of the way how many soldiers is it uh, it there is a what well, looks to be a regiment of 12. Um, plus this individual, and there are these hulking brute-like creatures that resemble ogres wearing stone armor, which you didn't see at first, but have just sort of drifted out from the side of one of the nearby buildings and are falling in lockstep with these individuals. And the, the hum this human woman now um, looks to each of you as the soldiers are continuing to move on and past you, and the human says, oh my goodness, what, what is going on? I, there's, there's this destruction, this, this will not do. Oh, are you all all right? And she's looking at you, Red, and she sees you on, on Humphrey or near Humphrey Lufana. She looks and she just sort of clocks each one of you. And she has a look of concern on her face. This one is not alright. This one has died. Come back to life. Watched her village be destroyed by clones of my friend. 
and fought some weird crab beast. Weird crab beasts? Well, that's, I, I, that's this terrible. This one does not know what it is. Well, other than that, are you okay? This one is alive. What about the rest of your companions? And she, again, she's looking at, at each of you. And the soldiers are, are continuing to look. You can see now their um, individuals in the distance are coming out of the buildings, a few of them. And the, the soldiers have spread out and they're now talking to each of them. And those hulking ogre-like behemoths are just just sort of lumbering along, looking around and looking inside the buildings. And in one you can see comes and is like is, is like inspecting like a, a broken uh, cart that's on the edge of the road. Or a voice. She's glowing. <laughs> you just said, yell that out loud. Yeah. And the woman just says, glowing? What was that? And she's looking around, very curious. Just just looking, again, she looks like she's dressed in an evening gown. Like, she looks like she's ready for a party. Hmm. And she looks to you, Red, and she says, My apologies, I am Hakima. This one does not understand why you are here dressed like that. Oh, I, I apologize. I came at haste once we learned um, from one of the um, members of the community that, that this place was under attack. We arrived as quickly as possible. Most of our forces are, are still um, coming in from the, the out, outskirts of the city and dealing with the, the rapscallions who, are, who have been setting fires and, and causing trouble. Do you live here? This one calls Hartham her home. But oh. the Shogunate has not intervened before in our issues. Yes, it I apologize. You are all very quite the Hartham is very remote. Um unfortunately I've only recently come into my position. Um but we are here now, we are here to help and to root out the terrorists that have been causing you all so much trouble. I was just on my way to actually speak to Mayor Ostrin. Um, one of my companions is already there um, with the member of the community that reported all of this uh, horribleness. Do you know the name of the person who reported this? Uh, yes, um, it was a businessman um, called a, a Mr. Vaughn, uh, Luther Vaughn. I believe he owns uh, one of the, the, the businesses in, in town. And and she turns around, that lovely bakery down that way. She gestures in the distance towards um, <coughs> the, uh, the Vaughn's bakery that you all visited previously. Mm. That's all I say. Hmm. I see you guys typing stuff in the in the chat and answer to your question, Eli, they don't appear to be. Okay. They do not they don't appear on, on the ethereal plane. Um just Kevin, did you have a question? I just need her on the combat tracker. For a spell. Okay. You can cast a spell without her being on the combat tracker and I can roll a save for you. What are you trying to do? Crown of Madness. Crown of Madness, okay. Well, I will manually roll that for you. That was a wisdom saving throw? Yes, it is. DC 17. Okay, well, she failed. So, in the middle of this conversation uh, with this human woman who's elegantly dressed for a ball or a dance, um, she suddenly just, her eyes just sort of glaze over, and the headdress that she was wearing just seems to become more prominent and stick out more spikes in various directions. 
The soldiers at this point have moved away from all of you, and she's standing in the middle of the road right near Red. She was gesturing off to the east towards the mayor's house just as you cast this spell on her. So how does this work now that you've cast it on her? She she's going to attack any of her allies. Okay. Uh, she turns around the nearest soldier, and she throws a fucking dagger at him. Out of nowhere, she pulls out a, a, a gleaming metal dagger and tosses it into the back of one of the shock troopers. Let me just roll a, an attack. <laughs> what? And hits him. And oh, and I was using... I was using greater invisibility, so I didn't become visible from doing this either. I'm just going to stealth around the building. Okay. Uh, this guy uh, takes the hit. It pierces his stone armor. Uh, he nearly doubles over in pain and turns back, looking back, confused. And he calls up. He says, we're under attack. And I need you all to roll initiative. As this is what we're doing, apparently. Merrick says she was glowing. That's bad. Did you say that? You said that out loud, right? She's glowing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, as soon as he said that, I took control of her. I let her fight her entire army, not us. Well, until she pa passes her save. Okay. This will be interesting. That is... Red lets out a very obvious, like, groan. <laughs> hey, I almost dropped the fireball, but I waited. <laughs> he made it! He made a first move killer! Alright, well, I guess I'll... Uh, if you guys would be so kind as to... I'm gonna say, Red, you were, like, right here. Um... I will unlock the tokens so that you guys can adjust yourselves on the map because we're just going to use this map all over again. So if you guys would like to uh, position yourselves pretty please. I stealthed around the building out of sight from them. Can you show me where they are on the map so I can know which way I went? I will, pos I will reveal them when you move yourselves on the map. When you position yourselves on the map. Okay, I just went around the corner away from them. I just don't know which corner I went around. Well, again, is that away from them? Uh, again, you'll you'll see when when I drop them on the map. Okay. And I'm invisible. Well, this is going to be interesting. Wait, Jeremy, has it been a minute since uh, Zito started to activate his uh, crystal? Uh, well, time is loosey-goosey. There was a conversation going on, so I would say that, uh, yeah, you would have been able to. So, uh, I would say that, I would say at least a minute has passed, so you'd be able to cast it on this first turn. So, we'll say that within the, the her starting to talk to Red, and then music casting the spell right around this time now um on your turn you'll be able to to cast it okay and let me just adjust the health of this soldier who got uh stabbed in the back by a sneak attack there we go Uh, music, you may move yourself uh, where you were at, if you want to say that's where you were. That's where I'm at. Okay. So you needed to you needed a line of sight to see her, correct? I cast it, and then I stealthed around the corner. Okay. So you have advantage on your stealth check because of your greater invisibility. So go ahead and roll your, your stealth check advantage.
Did you leave Humphrey on the roof, Luthana, or is that where you are? Um, Humphrey's with me. Okay, so where do you want him to be? Like, right next to you? Yeah, I'm still riding on him. You're still on his back. Got you. Yep. <laughs> okay. What was that damage? Do 13 damage. So we'll take 13 hit points off of him. There we go. And it's a Hakima's turn. Uh, so on her turn, she is going to. Uh, you said that she doesn't attack again? Um, no, nah, she would still be attacking. All right, she's going to rush up towards the, uh, the, uh, gen she'll go towards the gentleman who has a dagger in his back, and she'll pull the dagger out and begin stabbing him again. And she hits him. And dealing 12 piercing and force damage to him. And that's the and end now of her she turn. Can make a, she needs to make a wisdom save now. Okay, let's see if she comes to her senses. That's a... Nope. That's a 7. 9 does not do it. She is still... Yes, my pet. Kill them still, all. Still under your influence. Your spell, does it have an effect that can be dropped on her? Or no? No. Okay. I'm just curious. No, it does. I'll drop it on her. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, in response to um, the troopers saying that they're under attack... Uh, this one is going to rush forward. And he's going to get right up in your grill, Red. He sees you with a sword out, and he is he is pulling out his morning star. And then you can feel right behind you another one sidling up. And Lathana, it is your turn. These soldiers are suddenly responding. And the two individuals uh, are rushing towards Red and they're saying, Drop your sword now. You're under arrest. Lithana will fly. Okay. How far? Right up on. So are you uh, just you are down on the ground, just on his back, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So you, she will fly right on top of uh, Red's head. Okay. Like a couple of feet above. Gotcha. So she's close enough to get a bonus. <laughs> well, no, you get a bonus if she's five feet away from an enemy. You don't have to be five feet away from her. Oh, is that true? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, in that case... Uh, she'll just do the same thing, because she didn't know any better. <laughs> and she will hunt her to smark. Uh, cast Hunter to smark on Shock Trooper 4. Actually, I take it back. He would be back here still, because he had to move through difficult terrain. This whole area is, is difficult terrain. All right. Uh, 
But I guess we're doing this. Lothana's like, and, are, we, are we doing this? <laughs> and she's going to... Mm, sure, she'll sharpshoot him. Okay. That's a miss. She will try once again. Nope. Uh, and then she's going to fly back on the roof. Okay. She's like, hello, goodbye. <laughs> Alrighty. That's the uh, end of her turn. And the rest of these troopers now. This one is going to. Is now rushing towards you. Uh, and he's going to attempt to beat on you with his Morning Star. Red. So he walks up behind you and he says, Drop your weapon! And he hits you, dealing uh, 8 damage reduced down to nothing, partially resisted and absorbed. He then whacks you again, hitting once again with an 18. Uh, reduced down to nothing, partially resisted and absorbed. Uh, this trooper is going recoils in horror um, from this person. Um, and reaches out and just starts shaking her, grabs her and is shaking her, saying, snap out of it, miss. And this one is going to move. Let's see. Ah, it'll double move. It's going to uh, say that it's not quite, not quite up to you yet, but he's almost there. Zito, this one is rushing towards you, looking like he's, and you just hear him mumbling in a broken common, puny one, come with me, and it's your turn. So you get off uh, that spell that took a minute to cast, and you said that you're summoning an earth elemental? Uh, yes, and it is put on the combat tracker and has its own initiative. Okay, what kind of elemental are you summoning? It's an earth elemental, but uh, there's many normal. different. There's many different kinds. Uh, uh, the plain CR5 one that's in the Dungeon Master's Guide or the Monster Manual. Let's see. So just a regular earth elemental. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. I'll put him on the tracker. And he is a friendly. So, where would you like to put him? Like, right there? Yeah, right there is fine. Okay. Uh, Zito's not going anywhere. Okay. He is going to run away. <laughs> You're going to run away? I'm assuming that that took an action for me to do, correct? Yep. Yep, so I'm just going to run away. Okay. So this thing just sort of pushes itself up out of the ground. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Well, in that case, Red, it's your turn. You just, you just got surrounded on both sides. These guys, one guy has been whacking you in the back of the head, trying to get you to drop your weapon. Um, and you can see that woman just out of nowhere. She just it was crazy. She threw her a dagger at one of her own men and ran away from you just before that. And off to the west, a few, about 20 feet away from you, uh, a creature made of stone rose up out of the ground and is squaring off on a, one of those ogres. Hmm. Red is going to drop her sword and get down on her knees. Oh. Okay. And shout out to our group. This one is tired of the fighting. Stop. Okay. Uh, in answer to that, uh, one of the individuals carrying the rifles rushes forth 
Um, his full movement... Let's see, that was 30, because it's difficult terrain. He's trudging through the, the broken crater um, where the road used to be right there. Uh, and he's saying, get some irons on that one. Go find that little diminutive one, the kobold. And if you find any more of their companions, there's one up on the roof. That's the end of his turn. Uh, number six is going to rush over and they're just sort of dogpiling on you, making sure that you're not moving, Red. Uh, it's the Earth Elemental's turn. What will the Earth Elemental do on its turn? So he's going to knock some uh, ogre teeth out. I dropped the uh, character sheet on you, so you have his stats. And you mm. should, should be able to target target him now if you don't I can do it for you you wanted him to target the ogre yeah, I think I got it okay that's a hit 23 definitely hits as this thing just boom it's like watching the Hulk um, fight another big monster by the thing yeah it's like the Hulk and the thing fighting right now that's another hit as you is it throws a haymaker and smacks into the side of its face. And that'll be it. Okay. Uh, the rest of the troopers are continuing to rush forward. Uh, we'll say this one is going this way. It moves, It's full move in action. It's looking for you, Zito. And the other Pathfinder is going to continue. He's going to move with that guy. Let's see. Is this 30? So he is going to say he'll double move. He's got his rifle out. He's looking down the scope now, looking for you. And Eli, it's your turn. Man. I, I, hate, I hate to tell you, Lathana, but you wouldn't be able to whisper uh, to him. You might be, because he's not wearing his ring. gonna sneak over okay roll a That's stealth fair. check with advantage okay um as you you sidle up um one of the troopers spins and looks in the direction of where you're walking and he says wait i hear something and that's it. And he's like, he's looking, over. he's looking all around you now. Lean over and I'll whisper in the red's ear. He's possessed with one of those things we just fought. And he, I'll use the rest of my movement. Say, did you say he? He is. She? Yeah, as in the lady. Okay. As you're walking away, one of the troopers that um, observed uh, your impressions of your feet, if you're just walking, uh, he's he's lo he's looking in the ground and he's like, "Hey!" As you're walking away, and the other troopers, gosh, there's so many of them. Oh wait, he was already up here. We'll say he's here. Uh, he is going to. Do his full movement to get to you, Zito. And he's going to say, I see you, you little bastard. Stop right where you're at. So we can sort this out. And he's he's now pulling out a set of manacles from his side. And the rest of them will do the same thing. Moving as fast as they can. Uh, this one walks up, pats the ogre on the side, and he is going to rush around the corner. And music, it's your turn. You're invisible. I'm going to hold my turn um, and see if this ogre in front of me moves forward anymore. Okay. Are you going to hold a specific action? 
I'm going to cast a spell. Okay, keep in mind, if you are casting a spell and holding a spell, whatever you're concentrating on drops. When you're trying... All right, well, let me... Yeah, just that whenever you're trying to, like, hold an action, but it's a spell, that spell p- turns into a concentration spell. Okay, well, let me ask you this, then. Sure. Um, I, I don't know how to draw a 20-foot circle on the map. Can you show me how to do that? Sure, so you right-click, and then you select uh, pointers, that little arrow, and then you can select uh, an object, and then you click and draw. There you go. And you can change the color of that. If you change the color of your d- dice, that w- if you want to like keep your 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 circle or object different from your your friends, there's an option. I think that's going to work right there. I've got all four of the monsters targeted that I want to target. Okay. Okay. I'm going to cast Synaptic Static. Okay. Now, you are also you also have your, your friend in range. Is it, can you choose what creatures you can put that on, or is that something that's like an area effect that goes off? It's an area effect that goes off. If you can slide that circle a little bit to the right, I'll do it that way. Okay. You're going to get... Uh, Eli is just within range. You don't know he's there. <laughs> Bump it down a little. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. You don't know he's there, so I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. E- okay. It's an intelligence check anyway. Eli should pass that, right, yeah, Eli? He sh- yeah, you should be fine. Yeah, go ahead and target him. That way, it rolls automatically. There you go. Unfortunately, it's rolling for half damage. Sorry, Eli. Well, I clicked cast, but nothing's happening. That's weird. What's it called? Yeah, my f- synaptic sh- uh, static. Synaptic and my fantasy grounds static. just froze up. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cast it for you. Oh, wait, hold on. It might be. Okay, nope, good. I just did it. There we go. I probably just rolled again. All and right, Eli so saved. Everybody else e- failed. Eli saved. Everybody else failed. You can roll your damage. Okay, uh, Eli is no longer invisible. He failed his concentration check. Yeah, I'm gonna use the inspiration on that. Can you use inspiration on a concentration check? I hope, right? I need save. Oh, it's a check. I mean, and a, I mean, uh, an inspiration point on an. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. if you want to burn one of your inspirations. Go for it. Alright, so how much was that damage halved? It was 12. So it's 12 plus the um, spell level? Or is it ha- it's half of the damage? Plus the, plus the, half the uh, damage. Okay, so 6 plus... I think he should be okay. It's a, only a level 5 spell. So oh, I already sh- put the damage on me. Yeah, you are you're still got damage. I, know. I see. Yeah, it, this is just the check. Uh, all the targets also have muddled thoughts for one minute. During that time period, uh, they all need to roll a d6 and subtract the number rolled from all their attacks and ability checks, as well as constitution saving throws. Well, that's a pain in the ass. It's a shame it's not programmed into Fantasy Grounds. Yeah. So you're just going to have to remind me on their turns, uh, music. That's fine. I'll keep them all targeted until they're dead. So it only works on the ones that fail. Drop them. There should be an effect. There's no effect yeah. on the on the spell. Yeah, it's only the what ones that called? failed, and they can make an intelligence check to save out of it. Yeah, it's it's sta- synaptic static. There's there's no uh, ability on it. Um, this will be the last round, you guys. By the way, it is almost ten. Is that the end of your turn? Yes, it is. All right. Let's see, trooper number two. Oh, why the hell is he up here? He should be down here. All right, so we're gonna say that he is also using his full movement to get over to you. You're now surrounded, almost, Zito, as these guys are, are getting ready to manhandle you. 
on this one. Okay, so the first one, it has to um, subtract a d6 from its attacks and checks. Yes, that is correct. All right, so it's just sort of like stumbling forth. And then it shakes its head, it looks around, and it looks it looks at uh, your your companion, and it's gonna ru- it's gonna rush up, shaking its head on red, and is just standing at the ready. And uh, you Humphrey's got nothing to do, so as uh, after casting the spell, you watch the big lumbering armored ogre is rushing now towards the center of the road where uh, Red is kneeling down on the ground. Her sword cast aside. She's swarmed. And you all are now hearing a familiar sound of the din of that uh, horrible um, sound of people around who are yelling and screaming for help. And you can hear the sounds of of fires in the distance and and continued fighting. And the tremors beginning, every so often rumbling, making your feet vibrate beneath you. And in the distance, you can now hear another familiar sound, a mechanical sounding sound, the sound of those mechanical horses as you see each of you looking around, it seems to be coming from multiple um, directions now. Splint armored warriors on the backs of those Esther vehicles, those mechanical horse-like vehicles, who are now rushing at breakneck speed to where all of you are now, drawing their samurai swords out and holding them out at the ready. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. Are the people mechanical? Oh, and Jeremy, I figured out how to fix my spell list that I was telling you about. Oh, yeah? Yep, yep. If you happen to take a look at it and you see a level six spell on my spell list, ignore that. I will not be casting it. It's just there. So when I level up later, I don't have to go through and pick spells. I've been looking at spells for the last 30 minutes. Nice. Yeah, any changes you see in that list that I've changed will not go into effect yet. I got you. Dude, I have so many spells that I can't cast because I copied them all. Right. From older spell books. That, and you keep you keep finding spell books that I know much higher level spells. So when I actually finally hit level 11, I'll have like, oh, man, <laughs> open up a whole new arsenal. When I hit level 11, my new spell will be Irresistible Dance. I like that because when I cast it on somebody, they don't get a save against it. It just hits them immediately, and then they get a a chance to save out of it. Dude, that's awesome, dude. That's going to be funny, especially with your character, too. Yeah, because, I mean, I hit them with Irresistible Dance, and, uh, you know, they're... um, get They... Everybody that swings on them after that gets advantage on it. So if the monster goes first, I hit him with Irresistible Dance, and then Red comes over. Red's getting automatic advantage on every single swing just because he hasn't had a chance to save out of it yet. That's awesome. Which that's all hypothetical, but, you know, this it's going to be a good spell in the future, I think. Yeah, it is. My uh, level six spells disintegrate. I wanted that one, but it's not in my bard list. It isn't? Oh, dang. I didn't realize Barnes can't get it. Nope, but you know what is on my list when I, the one day when we get there? What? Wish. And with Wish, I can cast any spell yeah. I damn well oh, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Both of us will have Wish. We'll be nasty. And then yeah. if we once we hit level 7, I'll have Power Word Pain. Who is I've got a... Go ahead. I was just going to say, who is ready to uh, kick some Lothanabot ass? <laughs> oh, I've been ready. <laughs> All right. Um, is everybody here? Uh, uh, I think so. I think mm-hmm. Sabrina's just jumping on right now. Yeah, What's I'm up? here. Oh, okay. Yeah, right here. Hey, Ashley. I'm uh, here. Sorry. No I worries. 
mute. It, it's good to finally see you again in the server. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. The only Ma thing I saw like was somehow if maybe I got blocked. I, I reset know. my whole. I reset my whole computer though. <laughs> so. Well, I've had problems with connecting before. It has something to do. I think it has something to do with the ports because the classic Fantasy Grounds, like it has some weird thing with IP address, with the IP address where you have to open your ports to get it to work. And sometimes yeah. when your router has there's like a power surge or something, it resets and it messes everything up. It happens to me all the time. But yeah, it does. at the after the first of the year, we will be transitioning to Fantasy Grounds Unity. Yay! Woohoo! No, not my marshmallows. And I will also no longer be recording a video version of uh, the, our sessions. I will only be doing audio. It's just gotcha. I think with, that makes sense. Well, it it I've found out that OBS doesn't like Unity. <laughs> So, yeah. So, unless I can get that to work, I, I don't think we're going to I'm going to record the uh, the video version anymore. Which is less work for me.